Now I'd like to shift the conversation to some quick fire questions. Now this is yet another opportunity for us to get to know you a little bit better. And of course, with these questions, I want you to think as quickly as possible on the spot. We want to hear those initial reactions when you answer these questions. Let's start with this question. Describe yourself as a professional golfer in just three words. Then, okay, I'll say calm, cool, calm, and confident. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Let's talk a little bit about Investec Golf. When you think about Investec Golf, what immediately comes to your mind? Growing women's golf in South Africa and internationally. Absolutely beautiful. Talk, tell, tell us a little bit about your style as a golfer. What is your style? I'm calm. I'm, I'm a very calm player on the golf course. Uh, you, you'll never see, I don't show emotions. I'm, I'd say I'm neutral. You're neutral. But everybody yeah. knows as a professional athlete, sometimes you go through those moments where you get a little bit frustrated. Maybe you're trying to play that putt and it doesn't necessarily go your way. How do you deal with those frustrations? Um, it, it happens to all of us, but I mean, I think it's very important to play one shot at a time. So I don't really dwell on that because it's, it's in the past. So once I finish the hole, what's the point of looking back? Because I'm done with that hole. Even if I'm angry or anything, it's not going to change what, I, what I've done in that hole. So I try not to dwell on the past. Wow. So well said. Absolutely beautiful. Let's talk about your sporting career in golf thus far. Tell us a little bit about some of the highlights in your amateur career and also now that you're a professional. I think as an amateur representing my country seven times, playing in different countries, in different tournaments, that, that is the biggest highlight. Um, and as a professional, I'd say winning the Vodacom Origins last year at uh, Mount Edgecom. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Let's talk a little bit about the Sunshine Ladies Tour and some of the courses that you've played on. Which one truly stands out for you? Um, I wouldn't say there's one that stand out, stand out for me, but like, I feel like every course is the same as long as you're hitting straight and you're hitting the greens and making parts. So I don't really have, have, a, have a favorite out of, out of the courses that you do play. All right. Which one would you say is the most difficult to play on? The most challenging? I'd say the Gary player at Sun City. What makes it so challenging? Tell us a little bit more. I think also they are rough is is a bit is a bit tougher than than the normal the normal golf courses. I mean, so if you hit it off the target, you kind of you you're in trouble. There's there's no recovery from you. So that's why I'm saying it, it is a bit difficult. And also when it's when it's windy, it's it's kind of difficult. Oh, I hear you. Let me take you a little bit to the ladies European tour, the Solheim Cup. If you had to assemble your own team to play in this cup. Who are some of the ladies that you would include in your team? Honestly speaking, for me, it doesn't really matter who I would play with because I believe all these ladies, they are talented. Hence, there's always a different winner every week. So for me, it, it, it's, it wouldn't really be about who I'm playing with. Um, whoever that, that I get to play with, it would be great because all of them, they, they're great players. All right. So you don't necessarily have a favorite or somebody that you have a closer relationship that you would prefer playing with and winning the trophy? Not even. No, not really. All right. I hear you. Let's talk about some of the golfers, like in terms of both males and females, some of the golfers that you admire, you study their technique and you've learned a lot from over the past few years as you've grown from an amateur player to now becoming a professional player. Um, I'd say Dustin Johnson um, on, 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 on the guys and ladies, I'll say in the park. I like how when they play, they're very calm. They never show emotions or anything like that. So I, I really enjoy watching them play. All right. And then also in terms of some of the legends of the game, I mean, I'm looking at a player like Tiger Woods. I'm looking at a player like Gary Player. Um, who are some of those in terms of, of the greats um, in terms of the world of golf that you've sometimes went back, studied their game and said, I would love to at least maybe adopt their style, maybe adopt their character. Who are some of those people that stand out for you? I'd say adopting the character, maybe any. 
Um, simply because he has done a lot for 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 the golfing industry um all over. So definitely, and also because. I was also part of the NLS Foundation when I was still in Amata. I believe without their support, I wouldn't be the player that I am I am today. So definitely in. Definitely. Let's touch a little bit on the Ernie Owls Foundation. And I think that's quite an important point in terms of supporting golf from grassroots development. How important is this program in the foundation? And also, how do they support young golfers in the country? Um, the NLS and Fancourt Foundation, I believe it is it is a great program for, for amateurs. Um, I was fortunate to join the foundation when they were still like a junior foundation. Because they were only dealing with um, golfers that were still in school. Once you turn 18, you're no longer part of it. But luckily enough, again, in 28, 2015, they changed um, the program. So now they started to, to focus on the seniors and um, luckily I joined them again. So I feel like it is very important to have that program because now, for instance, with me, um, when I was part of them, I managed to, 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 to study because um, before them, I didn't have any financial, um, been, I didn't have finances to go further my studies, but I joined the NS Foundation. I could go to school and, and further my studies and I could play any tournament I wanted to play because they were literally paying for, for everything. So I could play everywhere I wanted to play and my game improved and I, I got I got a chance to study as well. So hence I, I'm saying I'll always be grateful for, for, for the NLS and Nco Foundation. You're locked onto the Sport MVT Insider, a podcast for unrelenting coverage of women in sport. Coming up this Friday, our athletes, coaches and administrators answer the questions that you have always wondered about. If you haven't sent through your questions yet, just slide into our DMs, tell us your name, where you're from and leave your questions and we will make sure that we ask them. Keep it locked onto Sport MVT, where we celebrate women in sport.